Hello and welcome to my video on the Elna SU model 62C from 1972. These are very nice little machines made in Switzerland and um, still very sought after today and uh, I can see why because they're, they're very very well built uh, uh, and they they just purr along uh, the very very smooth fast machines so yep, this video is uh, just a basic rundown on the machine and its basic operation uh, so you can see the machine there on the turn the machine here we can see the power, power socket and main switch here so first of all plug in the Foot controller and flip the switch. You can see the lights come on there. And uh, this particular model has the Elnograph system, so you can select your stitches uh, from the little knob here, and you can also insert Elnograph uh, cams. So you'll see that that's actually a, a stretch stitch, uh, if the camera will focus on it. Not sure if you'll be able to see that, but that's a, uh, a stretch stitch cam. So um, I'll show you that later on in the video. So uh, basic operation, it uh, will support a twin needles. So we've got two uh, tension posts, uh, sorry, spool posts there and um, so you can run two at a time and uh, for twin needling so I'll just show you the basic operation of uh, winding the bobbin so uh, let's put a bobbin on the bobbin winder here and uh, thread the uh, thread around this little eyelet on the left hand side and just wrap the thread around the bobbin there uh, some some people like to um, put the thread up through the hole and um, break it off from there, but I find that just winding it around several times is uh, good enough there. Let's bring that a little closer. And there's also on the end, on the hand wheel here, uh, we've got a little disengaging clutch, so uh, I could um, use in normal operation you, you put your foot down and the machine does its thing or if you just want to wind a bobbin you can disengage the clutch there so that just the hand wheel turns and then engage the bobbin like so I like to um, just steady the uh, spool there while it's winding bobbins so it doesn't rattle around like that. Uh, if it rattles around like that it can sort of stretch the bobbin thread. So if it's very light tension, very very light just to stop it from rattling. You don't want to put too much tension with your finger on this uh, spool there otherwise that will also stretch the bobbin thread and uh, yeah, that'll cause the seam to, to pucker potentially. Yep. So we've got a round a bobbin there. You'll notice also that the owner bobbins have got holes top but none on the bottom so that's a, an easy way of telling an owner or this version of the owner anyway this uh, series of owner bobbins. Okay so uh, the next thing to show you is to how to actually install the bobbin into the machine. So I'll just uh, get a bit better camera position. So hopefully you can see that okay there. I'll start by um, installing the bobbin. So I'm installing the bobbin and so that if I pull the thread off the bobbin, the bobbin rotates anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. So the thread's coming off from here out this way. And then you just drop it in like so 
okay and you'll see a little uh, slot I'll point to it with the pen here that's the first slot we want to go into uh, the second slot a little bit obstructed there so we thread will go down through here and then under a little spring plate behind here and up through this little uh, ledge here and I'll show you how to do that yeah, just through the first slot there now with these you've, you've got to make sure that the thread is actually going between a little fork I'll take a closer picture of it soon there's a little fork on the spring and if you hold tension on the bobbin here and just get your finger in you can, you can hear it click down into the little fork and that should pull nicely nice and smoothly there I'll see if I can get a better shot of that little I'm not sure if you can see that very well I'm holding the machine by hand but you can see the thread coming out under the spring from under the spring there and the spring has two little fingers coming off it you want to make sure that you get the thread under there it's quite important now you'll see the thread coming out there so what we want to do now is thread the needle and pick that bobbin thread up so we can now close the little back latch you can't see it there but there is a little cut out and between the throat plate and the uh, this plate here to allow that thread to still pull through there smoothly so now we want to uh, thread the top top thread there so again onto your thread post through the eyelet on the left there around this eyelet here and between the tension discs and then from left to right through the take up lever and we want to just um, hold back on the thread here and give it a bit of a pull because it needs to uh, flick over a little uh, little finger down in the tensioner there and you can see that it's got a bit of a spring action on it it's returning, I'm not sure how easy that is to see on the video uh, you can see that it's returning up and down there and then around the little eyelet there another little eyelet just above the needle and then we thread uh, front to back No fancy needle thread is required. Just thread nice and easily. I'm just re-engaging the clutch there. And we want to do one revolution. So I'm turning the hand wheel towards me at the top. So it's counterclockwise again, or anti-clockwise. One revolution until the take-up lever returns to its top dead center position. And then we can pull the bobbin thread up. And now it's ready to sew. Uh, so just a, a quick rundown on the controls. Uh, we've got a forward uh, stitch length here. So four, three, two, one, half, zero. So, and then uh, into the red area here is reverse. So if you leave it in the red, it will const constantly reverse. Uh, so we will set that at around about three for just a standard straight stitch. Bobbin wind is disengaged. We can put that down because we're not using twin needle. This is the reversing lever. So spring loaded reversing lever. Uh, this is your zigzag width. So if you're in zigzag mode, um, that's the width of the stitch. 
and there's a couple of positions there that's just a nice smooth uh, adjuster there but if you turn this 90 degrees you get indentations one two three and four and one more turn is for buttonholes which I'll show you later on and um, you've got a needle positioning lever here so uh, needle left and center left center center right and right and all in between too so you don't have to have it on either of these marks you can have it in between so we'll start with central tension got set to about five should be okay uh, this machine's been fully serviced and whatnot by myself so that's all set to go so first of all let's do some straight sewing and um, foot lift lever at the back here press the foot okay so we're just on to a straight stitch uh, just a little tip for people who um, are new to sewing uh, when you want to turn a, a corner uh, generally like a sharp corner say 90 degrees for instance you turn the machine in operating direction until the needle comes down to bottom dead center and then just up uh, say a quarter of an inch and a little bit more maybe uh, but never turn your machine backwards you should never turn it backwards so you want this just coming up and um, then you can turn your corner and off we go again and when you've finished when you've finished a seam you should always bring the take up lever to the top dead center position now I'm going to um, set the stitch width to the maximum and you'll see that now we're in zigzag mode so and we can close the stitch length up a little bit So that's zigzag. Now if I want to um, position the needle to the left hand side and do a narrower zigzag, I can do that just by changing the uh, needle positioning knob as I showed you before and just uh, reducing the zigzag width. And now you might see that it's a narrower zigzag coming out of there now. Whenever changing um, patterns, uh, generally, well, on, on any mechanical machine like this, it's not so uh, much of a problem with the electronic machines because they they handle it uh, better. But you have to make sure that um, your needle's out of the work. So turn the machine in operating direction, uh, and then you can uh, change the pattern. So I'm going from zigzag to like a um, it's almost like a blind hemming stitch uh, the reason you want to do that is because when you change sometimes when you change these patterns the needle bar will move uh, sideways and if the needles down in the work obviously it could bend or break the needle so just make sure that you bring your needle out uh, that also applies when you're changing your width as well so make sure that your needles out when you're changing the width Okay, so um, I'm going to change it to a uh, probably more of a probably like an applique stitch actually. In fact, I'm going to change the foot as well uh, for use with um, uh, satin stitching. It's just got a little bit more room in the back behind the needle uh, for close satin stitching which tends to sort of bunch together. 
So let's change that. So we'll just undo this uh, lock screw here. And uh, we can take the foot off. A little cut out there for the thread to go through. Likewise with this. Uh, in fact, this is actually a button holding foot. This is a satin stitching foot as well, but this does uh, a pretty good job of it. And I'll show you the uh, button hole function soon anyway. So I'm going to um, close up the stitch quite a bit here. We're on full zigzag. And we've got... Yeah, so this would be quite a good applique stitch. So I'm just uh, changing the pattern here to a different, different style. Quite a similar stitch that one. And uh, we've got another one here. This is uh, kind of like a tricot stitch or a, or a, th a three step zigzag except it's not, it's not a zigzag, it's more of a wavy stitch. And I'm going to change again to a, um, almost like a squarish type stitch. Almost like a, a rampart or something on a castle wall, I guess. That's what I see it is anyway. <laughs> uh, so the next one is a blind hemming stitch. So and as you can see though, quite a um, fast, smooth little machine. So and still going strong after all these years. Um, you know, over 40, 45, or nearly 45 years old. Uh, yeah, so that's a testament to its build quality. And um, you can still get parts for them. I replaced the uh, cam stack gears in them and, uh, and re refurbished them. So. Uh, so now I'll show you the uh, a stretch stitch. For example, We've got this one here, if the camera will focus, not sure if you can see that, but it's a little duck pattern. Um, so it utilizes um, uh, not only the zigzag uh, function, but the reversing function as well. So I'm just going to install that into the, um, uh, what they call the Elnomatic. It's this uh, mechanism up in here that does all the fancy work mechanically. So set the um, width back to zero. I'm lining up. There's a little uh, a little dot here which lines up with a little uh, spigot on the on the drive on the cam stack drive here. So I'm just lining that up. Click it in. Now we go full width, and we turn this um, the reversing lever until we get to the A position. So that's on the A position there, and that's for the um, elnograph, as you can see in here. Now those pattern stitches, while well, I've got the camera there, the pattern stitches I was changing before, there's this little knob here, you can see the different patterns. So these are all built in, so zigzag number two, three. Tricot, and then up to A. This that will engage this cam here, along with uh, this on A as well. So I'll just reposition there. Might help if I set the width. So it's making a little 
uh, design little pattern of a row of ducks. So um, yeah, getting our ducks in a row. There we go. Show you that. Okay. And um, there's a whole heap of cams that come for these. I've got a um, a little collection for um, my machine, and um, you know I've got a whole a whole bunch of them. And there's a, there's a big list of um, available cams, uh, and I, I've really only got well, probably probably less than half. So yeah, there's a whole heap. So um, yeah, no need for fancy electronics here. They, um, just need the old cams. So yeah, there's a few different types of feet. We've got a, um, a zip foot, which uh, I, I won't show to you here. It's it's pretty straightforward, really. It's just a matter of positioning the needle to the left or the right on straight stitch. Um, uh, pin tucking, I think pin tucking foot. There's a whole lot of accessories available for these as well. Um, that's a free motion uh, darning and embroidery. I'll, I'll demonstrate that. And it works in conjunction with this little plate that covers the feed dogs. Now uh, these machines, unlike some of the Beninas and some of the other machines, they don't have a drop feed mechanism. You just put this little plate over to stop the feeds from um, uh, gripping onto the material so the, the feeds sit up and under this little recess under here. Now I'll just show you another little cam. That's like a little uh, little star design. So I'm just inserting that uh, cam there. Uh, now with, when you're doing these cams, when you're changing these cams, you actually have to take this out of the A position into just the normal, just into the reverse stitches here or straight and set the um, width back to, to zero uh, because that sort of disengages all the little followers in here and allows you to push this button here to eject. Uh, it just pops the disc off. I'll show you here. It just pops the disc off so you can grab it and um, sometimes it doesn't come up that high, it might just sit there so you can change those and then when you've got your new one in there, re-engage, bring your um, stitch back up to A and you're ready for the new design the um, little star star pattern. You can see the slightly offset there. I'll give you a better look at the um, unbalanced uh, star pattern we've got there. Uh, that's nothing to worry about really, that's just a matter of uh, balancing or adjusting uh, the A uh, here or just either side you'll see there's a little plus here or a minus on the uh, left hand side and it's just a matter of slightly turning the the dial to um, to balance those out and that that's used to balance the buttonhole as well uh, because as, as things change in the machine or this uh, uh, different fabrics or uh, different threads and whatnot that get used um, it can change the uh, behavior of uh, the reversing and uh, and therefore uh, the balance of the of the stitches. Uh, so now I was going to show you the uh, buttonhole features. That, well, actually, this, there are two ways of doing buttonholes uh, with this machine. One is a manual way, and it's fairly common for machines that don't have buttonhole features. Is the manual process which I, I won't cover in this video, I might do another video on that uh, later on uh, but this one has a semi-automatic buttonhole feature 
So I'll go through the um, process of that. So first of all, um, we want to be in the buttonhole mode. So you, you might have been sewing normally, so that stitch length might be on three, you might have the zigzag down to zero, and your needle cent centralized with your uh, zigzag here. So uh, first of all, you want to make sure you've got no cams in uh, when you go to do a buttonhole. Set the uh, zigzag, so you know if you have been using reverse stitches and you're on A, you want to take it out of A and uh, back to the zigzag. And it's a little bit um, uh, counterintuitive really because when you engage um, the buttonhole, you'll see you're on the A position there. Uh, so you would kind of think, well, maybe I should have this set to A as well, but that's not the case. Um, they, they come with a very good manual. Um, I think you can probably get one off the internet for free. I'm pretty sure you could. Uh, so what you want to do, yeah, make sure that's on um, zigzag. Position the uh, needle to the left position and set uh, yeah, this to the buttonhole, little buttonhole icon there. And then you want to, this pulls out and turns. So that's 90 degrees clockwise and another 90 degrees clockwise gives you the buttonhole feature. So that's uh, ready there for buttonholing. Now, the manual says you should be able to position that up to number two here. But I've actually found with this, with these models, that it won't, it won't do that. Um, I find you have to come out of the buttonhole, bring this over to close to two, and then re-engage the buttonhole, and then you'll find that um, it takes a little bit of force. You can bring it back to zero up to two and past two to four. So what that's doing is, uh, and that stops there, like it's got a little stopper. I can force it past there. Uh, that's your uh, bar down the left hand side, uh, the narrow bar, left hand and right hand side. And over on four is the bottom and the top bar, the wide bars. So, and then zero to reset the buttonhole. So we start at two. Uh, so I'll just take you through that again quickly. Um, so I would um, bring this out to buttonhole, up to around about two there. It actually locates into a little, you can feel a little uh, indentation there. And then engage, engage the buttonhole and then bring it up to four and, and, and back to two again. It goes back into that little indentation. Okay, so it, yeah, it's a little little bit fiddly, but once you know how it works, it's it's straightforward. Um, so we're we're ready for um, button holding there now. You generally want to uh, do this on a scrap piece of material, um, roughly the same thickness as the uh, garment or whatever you're sewing. Um, so the likes of uh, a placket, for instance, on a shirt. Uh, you might find that you have to cut a little bit off the bottom of the shirt anyway and you're left with a little bit of a, a placket end so you could use that um, to do your um, trial run for getting your uh, your, your buttonhole uh, perfect. Uh, generally these machines do most of the work for you. So we're set to go there. Uh, so the only thing I'll be changing here is that width. I'll be going from 2 to 4 and back again to two, and then up to four, and then resetting with zero. So I'll explain that as I go. So we should be uh, set to go there. So we're, it's actually doing the reverse. It's doing the last bar. Uh, well, the second to last bar, because I um, fiddled around with it before. I'll just reset it. So I'm going to zero back up to two and we should start with a forward uh, motion so 
down the left hand bar. Now I'm going to make this buttonhole very long, just as a demonstration. Uh, so you really need to have these, the buttonholes marked out. It's not a fully automatic buttonhole, you still have to uh, look at where you are on the garment. And um, so we want to uh, say that's the end of the buttonhole. Bring your needle back out um, by turning in operating direction. Uh, because when you go up to four on the width there, uh, the needle could potentially, uh, the needle bar could move sideways. So as I explained before, you don't want that happening. So this is the bottom bar, the wide bottom bar. So we just do a few stitches there. And then I'm going back to two. And we'll just go back down the home straight. Uh, the foot's see-through too, so you can see when the end of the buttonhole's coming up, generally. Overshot a little bit there. I'm not taking much care, but uh, and then back off onto four width. So that's the top bar, and then zero to reset. And if you're going to do another buttonhole, you come back up to two on the width. That's what I'm changing there. And um, yeah, you can see there that I was a bit careless there, so I've got a little gap uh, at the top there because I overshot on the home straight. So um, yeah, if you want to do a little buttonhole. Bottom bar, so I'm up to four. Home straight. And then top bar. And then zero. Uh, zero actually acts as a locking um, stitch too. So just very uh, fine stitches, which is good for locking your, um, your threads off from the buttonhole. So there you can see it's a nice little buttonhole. So yeah, that's um, quite a nice uh, one of the nicer one of the nicer buttonholes. I find um, some machines can make the buttonholes look like a an ugly scar. They they really do uh, make them look terrible, uh, do a very bad job with them, but the uh, the Elna, the Selna uh, model, most of the Elnas, the early ones anyway, um, and the Beninas are very good at buttonhole, uh, and some of the early singers, the German made singers, do very nice um, automatic, uh, fully automatic buttonhole. I'll probably end up doing some more videos on those other models too, just out of interest. Um, I've got a little collection of machines, so uh, keep an eye out for some more videos if you are interested in some of the uh, the older machines. I, I don't. I, I may do uh, reviews on modern machines, but at this stage, I'm mainly interested in the older uh, machines. So keep an eye out for uh, any other other videos if you're interested. Uh, so now I'll just quickly um, go through the process of converting to um, uh, doing free motion or darning. Uh, so we'll remove the buttonhole foot and I've got a darning foot here. Now the the bar there, this this bar here sits over top of a uh, a little um, a little bar on the needle bar. So just where it's actually uh, the ne very close to the screw for holding the needle in. Uh, so we just insert that. Make sure that your needle's in the central position. And um, we're putting this little cap on over the, to cover the feed dogs here. So uh, we want to bring up the needle, uh, the bobbin thread. So I, I just um, thread it through. Thread it through like that. Bobbin thread here and then just position that. Onto the 
feed dog there. It needs a little bit of force to put it in. Uh, not only do you bring your thread up through, so this is your bottom thread up through the hole there, you want to bring your top thread down through the um, uh, foot as well. So you've got both threads uh, coming in between here. And then um, you get your piece of fabric. Uh, drop the presser foot. So I'm setting um, uh, the zigzag down to zero. Stitch length doesn't matter because it's not being affected at all because of this cover. You could have the stitch length on maximum if uh, if you wanted to. It's not going to make any difference. Uh, but yep, yeah, you want to probably have your zigzag uh, disengaged generally. Unless you're doing um, monogramming, which you use the zigzag to a certain extent. Uh, I won't go into that. I don't. I haven't even tried. Well, I have tried monogramming, and it's very difficult to do manually. <laughs> so I, I won't go there. But um, this is your uh, standard. So I'll demonstrate maybe some darning to start with. So imagine we had maybe a little hole to darn up. And um, just give it a bit of juice. So I'm just moving it back and forward. And I guess you could go the other way as well. I'm sure there's an art to it, and no, I'm not very good at it, but uh, you know. uh, and so you could use this for um, quilting, so doing uh, designs on your quilts. I'll go down here to a new patch. Uh, that this there is an art to this as well, and I, I certainly haven't um, uh, done much of this at all. If I haven't really done any, just apart from playing around. So uh, <laughs> excuse the um, lack of skill here, but you know you can uh, free motion around there. So I'm just guiding the fabric really where I want it to go. There's no feeding being done by the machine at all. Uh, so the slower you go, uh, the longer the stitches will be. The slower, sorry, the slower you um, run the machine, uh, the longer the stitches will be. It really depends how fast you move the fabric too, so they sort of tie together. If you go really fast, you can move the fabric faster. So um, yeah, that's uh, that, that's a pretty handy feature, really. And um, so uh, there's not a lot more to show you, really, of the basics. Um, one handy thing is uh, these machines have uh, a metal case, generally that comes with them. Uh, they look like a um, an ammunition case, especially the uh, the green ones. This one's bluish. And they look a bit like an ammunition case. Uh, the reason for that is uh, that apparently Elna, uh, when World War II came around, I think it was World War II, uh, the factories were repurposed to uh, make ammunition. So they stopped making uh, sewing machines and made ammunition. So there's a interesting little fact and that's why uh, uh, the cases look like ammo boxes so um, you know if you see one of these in the uh, 
Salvation Army, don't don't uh, think that it's a box of ammunition. Just um, have a wee look inside. You might find a, an Elna. So um, yeah, but a uh, neat little thing you can do with them is uh, slide this on here uh, to convert convert the machine to a uh, flatbed. Uh, and as you can see, it's, it is a free arm machine too, which is a, a nice feature. Uh, the, there were models of these that came out flatbed as well, so they could actually be sunk down into the table and you could mount them right into a, uh, a table. So, you know, you've got a nice big area there if you are doing a bit of um, uh, quilting. That's about it really. There's not much more... Uh, well, this, there are, as I said before, there are a lot of um, a lot of uh, accessories and um, very nice little manuals, uh, instruction booklets. Uh, so this is number one. There's actually two of them. Uh, there's that's the flatbed model there and the free arm. Uh, Really nice, um, really nice manuals. You don't get manuals like this anymore. Uh, you can see that the um, photos are, or the illustrations are very nicely done. Uh, that's the other thing I needed to show was the accessory tray, which is here. Accessory tray. Uh, so keep bobbins and accessories in there, that slips on like so and then you can, before you put the machine away, um, you can slide the accessory tray onto there like so, yeah pretty handy. So um, manual one just shows the basic, basic operation, pretty much what I've just been through, um, detailed illustrations. Uh, buttonholes. Uh, here's the list of uh, cams. So you can see it's quite extensive. Uh, 156 different cams. So a uh, little troubleshooting guide at the back. Index, nice index. Um, the second booklet is a sewing guide, so it, tell, it, it almost teaches you how to sew. Uh, troubleshooting tips, there's a bit of puckering going on here, so stitches are too long. Tells you about thicknesses, pleating, gathering, zips, overcasting, patching. Uh, more patching, jerse fixing jerseys. You can see someone's made little notes there. Probably in 1973 or 74 or something. When someone bought this machine new, I bet they were pleased when they got this out of the box, brand new. Uh, shell stitch, blind stitch. There's um, satin stitching with uh, monogramming. So yeah, you'd have to be pretty skilled to uh, to do this so I, I think that would take a lot of practice I'm sure there's people out there that can do it applique so yep it go you know that's uh, quite a substantial little little booklet and um, some of the accessories available interesting uh, what was that one pin tuck Two ten oh tucker foot, yeah tuck tucking, yeah so you know, I guess pin tucking. Uh, I've got some of these accessories, I might do separate videos for some of those other bits. But yeah. Uh, so yep, that's the uh, lovely little Elna SU. And um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Uh, keep an eye out for some of my other videos.